As you may already know, Flux is good at generating images with various panels, such as a left and right half, and because everything is generated at once, it can maintain the overall context in each panel. In Context Laura's aim to enhance that capability, and the authors have released 10 of them as examples. You can train your own ones too, and they even provide an example config and dataset you can use in AI Toolkit. Hopefully, these example images give you a good idea of the fun you can have with these, and yes, you can use your own images too, but more on that later. Also, a quick apology for the audio today, as I'm still recovering from a cold. Taking a quick look at their paper, there are plenty of pictures, like this example showing a young artist's creative process. I'll show you this Laura in action in just a moment, but it's worth noting here they've modified the result ever so slightly, as the actual generation is more like a square with four panels, so I think what they've done here is just cut it up so it fits on the page better. Now the plan is that the context is maintained throughout, which you can see in the prompt underneath there. So yes, you do indeed mostly have the same person. She's got a sort of overall there without the brown shirt and the brown shirt in those, which is interesting. But those two pictures look quite similar, even though it's different to that one. So that's that's the general idea anyway. It's meant to be keeping things in context. They've got more examples here with their font, Laura. So there the font is meant to remain consistent. There's another one there with housing. So you've got interior design. There's a nice sandstorm effect there. So you've got the guy and suddenly he's covered in sand or you can go from photo to illustration and a whole bunch of other things like that. Do have a look through their paper as there's loads more information and examples in there. But now I'm going to show you how to use these and also what they all look like. As it's simply a LoRa file, all you need to do is use the LoRa loader, just like this one here. Uh, I imagine they should work in other software which supports Flux LoRas too. Everything else is completely bog standard. So over here we've got our usual loader, all the Flux stuff in there. Now I've also copied their various example prompts from the, uh, the Hugging Face page there because they've got different widths and different examples in there. So I can't remember stuff. I, I like to copy and paste it. For their first example here, we've got the couple profile design. So that's the name of the file and they suggest a width of 2048 and a height of 1024. So that's what I've done over here. We've got the width and the height there and I've copied the prompt up into here, but I've changed it slightly. So this time I've got this pair of images features two characters in medieval times. You've got image one and image two. So what does that come out like? Well, let's have a look. There we go. So we've got our standard case sampler there, all the usual stuff. And then we've got a fairly consistent result. Now that's pretty cool, isn't it? The next example is using the film storyboard LoRa, which instead generates three panels. Again, it's mostly the same guy in each image as he generally improves his quality of life by upgrading from Windows to Linux. Absolutely no meme potential at all with any of these LoRas. The font LoRa we saw an example of previously in their paper, and it's not really something I'd ever use personally, but it does give you some good ideas as to what sort of things you can do with it or even train yourself. Also in the realm of slightly too boring for me to use, but it's consistent anyway, is the home decoration LoRa, but maybe that's something you're into. The Portrait to Illustration LoRa is a slightly more interesting idea, with the right panel sort of being a playful illustration of the left panel. On to that first example from their paper, which we saw right back at the beginning. This is the one they call the Portrait Photography LoRa. Hopefully you can see what I mean about the image cropping, as this doesn't generate four panels next to each other. We've got a more sort of square arrangement there. And remember, this is a single large image, so you have to do any of that cropping afterwards. Their presentation template isn't all that exciting for me either, but once again, it showcases how you could sort of generate a mock-up like this. Slightly more exciting is the sandstorm visual effect. Obviously we saw it earlier with a guy sitting in a pose, so it doesn't have to be a guy on a bike. You can prompt away for anything you like. 
In a similar vein is their sparkler effect and the way it made the sparkles into a rodent face in this one I thought was rather good and far better than their wedding love heart shape example. The final one then is their visual identity design, Laura. Very easy to see what's going on here with the happy pineapple being generated on the left and then being chained slightly by adding a circle and putting it onto that shopping bag. But nerdy, what if I have my own brand image and I want to see what that looks like on a bag? Can I do that? Well, yes, yes you can. But we have to use an old trick from way back in time before even the reference control net existed. What's going on here? Well, basically it's an outpainting task, isn't it? We want to fill in the right-hand side of the image. So I'm loading the example image, resizing it to whatever I fancy, and then saying, hey, deal with this. So simple bit of maths to start with up at the top. So I'll take the width, divide that by two, resize the image so it makes sense, and I've got the pad image for outpainting. The right value there is once again the simple math. So the width divided by two. And then I've got that image on the left. And we've got a nice mask as well. So I can VAE encode that for in painting. And there we go. It should use that image and then only fill in the right hand side. Is that what it does? Well, let's have a look up here. As you can see, the latent from there is our new latent. We're not using an empty latent anymore. There's our example image. Oh, there we go. Look, look at that. And of course, you can crop it out as well. So there we've got our, our dude and he's wearing the nice T-shirt with the image that we provided. Now, it's also worth pointing out, like they do in their paper, that you don't actually need a Laura to do many of these tasks, but they can definitely help, certainly with the three panel examples and the four panel examples, they can be a little bit tricky to generate. And also, as you can see here, I've got the Laura bypassed there, so it's not using it at all. The hair is a different color too. So in this particular case, enabling the Laura, I can go back over here, control B, there we go. I'm using the couple profile in this case. Enabling the Laura does make the output image a little bit better. You don't always need a Laura, like with this bag example, personally. I think Flux has done a fine job there all by itself, but this is a reasonably simple test. Often the visual identity Laura works well for this kind of task. Plus, like here, you can even transform the images into things like tattoos. Things aren't perfect all the time, even with the Laura though. So here I've got another one where Flux is deciding to make that first panel a little bit too large. So there it's adding in these few extra details, which once we get to the crop, of course, it's cropping incorrectly and that doesn't look, I mean, it's okay, but oh dear. Let's have a look with the one with the Laura. There we go, much better. So I think that's done the tattoo better, but it's still hasn't fixed that crop, unfortunately. There you have it then, 10 new Lauras to play around with and a way to inject your own context into any image simply by using the old outpainting trick. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way.